Hello, and welcome to a Marketing Cheat Codes podcast takeover of a Primo Sync. My name is Ed Brielt, CMO at Primo. I'm really excited to first time doing a live uh, podcast here. First time we'll have interactive Q and A, um, and also first time we've got a a, a Primo customer uh, on the podcast, Derek Panzarello. Derek, welcome to Marketing Cheat Codes. Thanks, Ed. It's good to be here. Absolutely. And I did notice um, also uh, during the Sync event here, we've got the uh, the uh, Primo Jeopardy game, and you're like crushing the leaderboard. You've got 6,000 points. <laughs> <laughs> so are you competitive much? <laughs> a little bit. I'm, I'm a little, I, I was telling um, Noah before that I'm a little disappointed I got a couple wrong. So. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. That's awesome. Well, um, it, it's people are coming after you. You know, they're they're staring at your back right now on the leaderboard. So, uh, when to put that out there? We're going to have some more competition. But um, yeah, really excited to have you on. Of course, uh, you're, uh, you're you're leading the the Dam Initiative at Amerisource Bergen, and mm -hmm. uh, you've got just a tremendous story uh, to share with us. Like, I love it. Like the hero's journey. Every dam activation um, and or any sort of change initiative uh, in any organization has heroes. They go through a beginning, a struggle, you know, that tipping point, a new beginning. I'm really excited for you to take us through uh, your story. And, um, you know, of course, you're a senior graphic designer and dam administrator. I think something that mm -hmm. I always love to hear about is how you got there. So we're going to want to have you take us back to the beginning. And then for folks who don't know Amerisource Bergen, uh, public information here, but large company, $221.1 billion in annual revenue, um, manufacturing solutions, provider solutions, animal health solutions, and pharmaceutical distribution. And I scraped this off your website, and then I'm going to throw it to you, Derek, to see how it res resonates. But I love reading into mission statements and like the why of uh, businesses, why they're out there. And I really love this. Uh, it was part of the purpose statement that you have. And you just went through a big rebranding at the same time. And that's really going to be a lot of the, the story we're going to be telling here. But uh, it essentially says we understand our moral obligation to improve the well-being of human and animal populations by expanding access to quality health care, operating sustainability, and upholding the highest standards of safety and quality. Um, and you've been on this mission with them for a long time. Take yeah. me back to the beginning, Derek. Yeah, so I, I've been working uh, with the company in the animal health segment for the past 15 plus years. And really, like you had mentioned, our, we have a large organization. Um, there's over 42,000 employees. We have um, 30 plus business units. We're in 50 countries. And the nice thing about our organization as a whole, whether it be from pharmaceutical solutions to animal health solutions is we're trying to create healthier futures. So we are united under that, that cause. And <clears throat> whether it's, you know, doing something as arduous as rebranding our entire company <laughs> or setting up a dam, which does have its challenges, you know, we're all aligned in that end goal. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that, you know, which makes change success and what makes great leadership is, is a mission, a purpose, and then common understanding of why we're doing what we're doing. And uh, I think that's, that's core to your story. Um, now, let's, let's talk about you for a minute. Take me back to the beginning on, so I love folks who have digital asset management in their title. I mean, a lot of folks who are um, in the Primo community, it's just a it's just where we play. It's our space. And to mm -hmm. see titles now emerging with this in there, take me through a little bit of your origin story, your career arc of how you got to having digital asset management in your title. And then let's pick up on how you were that, uh, that champion within your organization. Yeah. I've, I've always been a graphic designer and that's always been kind of my bread and butter. And, but as my careers developed, I've, you know, delved more into different aspects of marketing. And one of the things that I'm 
I'm pretty good at and that I've always applied even to my design is a customer experience of like, okay, what am I doing that is translated on this page or in this asset that the customer can like grasp easily and digest it. And that's where I came into the dam project. So it was like, okay, Derek has a good grasp and a sense of discernment. How can he help us moving this forward? Because really the designers are the ones using these assets all the time. Yeah. I so, mean, you, you, you essentially, you went to school for design. You went to an art Institute yep. and yep. you are a, a practitioner of design and even, um, design experience. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And I have no, no official customer or experience training, but I've always approached things with the mindset of what's this going to look like for the end user, whether it's external or internal facing. Um, yeah. User experience design. Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, so there comes a day where at Amerisaurus Bergen, they, they say, Derek, we've got this strategic initiative. We're going to do a whole rebrand. Um, we know that the underpinnings of that will be with some replatform technology, digital asset management. So, what was what was that conversation whenever they said we want you on this team leading the charge through a rebrand activation of dam what was the conversation and what were the like the early days of yeah, trying right. to understand the problem that you had to go solve so the the problem was <laughs> we were trying to we had a targeted date for a rebrand and we were working with an external global rebranding agency to help us with this effort because it was, it's a huge effort. Um, and it was determined along that path during those discussions that, you know what, we really need to have a place to house these assets and distribute them to our associates. So unfortunately <laughs> it happened rather quickly and it was like, Hey, I know that we have this deadline coming up of when we would like to have the brand launch, but we really need to kind of have a dam. And the conversation that included me was because I'm part of the creative team. So if we just kind of handed everything off to the people who handle the MarTech stack or, or IT or something like that, it might not end up the way we want. So let's have a seat at the table and really kind of like co-lead this. So my partner, um, who is the director of marketing technologies at Amerisource Bergen, John Ryan, he and I teamed up because we both looked at things in different lights that complemented each other. And it was like, okay, well, you've got that covered. We're going to keep working on the rebrand, by the way. <laughs> so that, that journey it was incongruent with this rebrand and it literally happened from September 20 and it ended uh, January 21, right at the beginning of February is when we launched, I believe. Yeah. So this was really fast and we had a lot to do in that short amount of time. So we just kind of rolled up our sleeves, dug in and, and did it and worked with the Primo team, which was fantastic. Awesome. So hind hindsight's 2020. I love, Again, marketing cheat codes. We love sharing hard won lessons. A rebrand and a dam. Would you ever recommend anyone do that at the same time, or what did you learn from from that? Uh, no, no, <laughs> <laughs> never. <laughs> Don't do it. That's my advice to someone else. If you are planning on rebranding, establish establish the dam first get that infrastructure in place because that's going to only simplify the rebranding process and maybe for everyone and involved accelerate maybe right because maybe you know due to the fact of collaboration uh single platform sort of that drive to co a common yep. will then create the organizational change mindset needed 
et cetera. Yeah. And, and really it would mitigate, it mitigates uh, confusion and disruptions. I can't tell you how many times while we were working on rebranded items so that we could have them ready for our launch, it was emailing this person because they had the latest logo version or emailing that person or messaging or slacking for different assets. And oh, is this, is this the right one? I don't know. It was so confusing. Yeah. And then we had to go and we're like, wait a minute, let's go check all this. Okay. Let's go audit everything that we just did because we don't know if it's the right stuff and we're learning the brand. So it's not like we were experts at this. We were learning along the way. We're still learning. Um, I don't, I don't think that there's ever a point where, where you stop learning your brand because your brand evolves. So having an infrastructure in place that could say, yep, that's the right one. It's been approved. It's, it's distributed to the right people that need it would have been tremendous. Cheat code one, get your dam established first. Oh, Create that common yeah. foundation takes the chaos yeah, out. Yeah. You know, I, I played video games a lot when I was a kid and it was the old, you know, Nintendo and super Nintendo. And I don't think there's any coincidence that our, you know, our company name, Amerisource Berg, and we go by AB. AB, and yeah. On the buttons, it's AB. And I think like the cheat code <laughs> that I, I thought of was, you know, AB forward, back, forward, back, forward, because that's what we would do in our process with, with the dam or even with rebranding. Mm -hmm. We'd take that path forward and start developing something that we think was right and working with the Aprimo team, set it up and then go, wait, let's put on the brakes. Let's go back. No, that didn't work because of this and this and this, you know, test, 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 reassess, really spend time evaluating the user experience and use cases for all users involved at all security levels, and then go back to the drawing board if necessary. Yeah. I mean, that's brilliant. I think when you think about uh, organizations who can evolve through change, having that, uh, those retros, those resets, that learning organization that's willing to look back at what the work they've done. I mean, that's a true learning, learning organization. Um, love that cheat code, like that iterative uh, learning and then distribution of insights helps with the, the change, right? Because you're going to have your, your resistors, you're going to have your champions. People want to know why they're changing. To, so to have those iterative loops of this is the value we're getting, our incremental progress. Um, now, Talk to me again. Now we're now you know the mission, and you're moving, and you've got these. You're, you're fighting multiple battles, so to speak, uh, solving multiple problems at once. The struggles that you 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 would you would face. You know, you mentioned some around findability of assets, but what about? Let's start at like the 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 people level, like the cultural level. What were some of those cultural barriers that uh, AB found during the? the activation process of the rebrand? Well, it's, I mean, it's a big challenge with any of this. We have to communicate assets from our creative team, which is less than 30 people at AB, you know, uh, wow. and, and only 16 de designers. We have to communicate assets to 42,000 employees that have, so many different scopes of responsibility. It's not just, hey, we're all doing the same thing. We're making a widget. No. Uh, it could be to a sales rep that's trying to sell livestock supplies to feedlots. It could be to um, someone that's trying to explain solutions for chemotherapy initiatives and, 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 and solutions. There's just so many different things that we have to take into consideration. So a lot of the times we'd go down these rabbit holes of really finite details and we'd have to put on the brakes and use that cheat code and go back and say, mm -hmm. let's simplify it. What, what is it that we're trying to do here? And, and what is the definition of success? Is the juice worth the squeeze? I get, People always make fun of me because I, I say that, that all the time. <laughs> no, I think it's great. 
But should we even I, do I, that? I say it all the right? time. Uh, yeah. It, is what we're doing going to produce value? It, you know, that return on investment or, you know, as a, a Prima uses return on effort. I think that's, that's huge. That's such a great way to look at things because we often get caught up, especially in such a large company, just doing the same things because we've done it that way. Well, now we can produce assets and distribute them that are the right assets for the right people at the right time and make it easy. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I mean, that's the, the theme to sync this year is those two words, RE, rethink, uh, reimagine, uh, letting go of some old legacy uh, ways of doing things, kind of get, getting out of your own way and lifting your head up out of the sand and uh, tackling the problem. Um, and so I love that cheat code, you know, the why is the juice worth the squeeze. Mm -hmm. So we got two awesome cheat codes here. Another one too, you were hitting on, which is team. So like in terms of people having a diverse team, diversity of team roles yeah. and members, and you were, you touched a, uh, on a little bit about you, your, your partner in um, infrastructure yeah. technology, what makes a good, what's a, the composition of a diverse team who's going after damn uh, activation transformation across an organization? Well, I think it's super important and I, I'm fortunate enough to work with an awesome team. I mean, we have such a diverse group of people that are open to ideas and open to different ways of thinking. And what was successful for us was like, look at me, you know, somebody could say, Oh, you're just a graphic designer. What do you have any business doing? helping to construct a dam. Well, if you think about it, having a diverse team, you know, of, of designers, uh, salespeople, people at IT and tech levels, all these different input things, all that, all that does is produce data points for you, right? It's information. So you can learn, you can absorb that and you can use that to structure out and plan out what you want to do. So, if you're going to build a dam, don't just dump it off on the people who handles, you know, your subscriptions and your, your, your technology stack at your company. Involve the people that are going to use it. Involve the people that might not even use it and get some feedback there. It is important to not silo yourself in into these tiny channels of what you think might be the, the right thing because oftentimes there's somebody else with an outside point of view that could change your whole system for mm -hmm. the better just because they were brought in at the right time or they were part of that process. Yeah. I love that to so be very inclusive uh, oh, in yeah. on who, who's involved. Um, now, I, one thing also interested in is like ecosystems within infrastructures is always like really interesting to me like understanding ecosystem fit of technologies that were there processes that currently existed. But when you think of, when you, when you think of the dam, right, you talked about it being like the change platform for the rebrand, what, uh, what types of, um, you know, technical connections did you need to make uh, process connections? It, does it sit at the hub, the heart of Amerisource Bergen? And what, what are some of like the, 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 touch points and interconnects that were, that made it successful? Well, honestly, this is something that we're still working towards. We have a lot of success with the dam, but the, one of the reasons we wanted it is because like any other large corporation, you have all of these different things and a lot of them do the same thing. We wanted to have a single source of truth and we're working towards that. That's, that's a never ending goal. And, you know, like there's always going to be something else that comes down the line. You want to integrate it in. So we have our content management system. We have for, uh, you know, all of our websites and, and our digital platforms. We work with external agencies that help with, with social media and, and, and other design, um, things that we need done. And we have all these things, as part of this organization that people can go to, you know, all these tools that they can use, but really the dam, the idea and the goal of it is to be that single source of truth for those assets, for that information so that people don't 
have to ask the question, well, where do I find this or how do I get it? As a designer, for years and years and years, I mean, how, how many times have I gotten an email that says, do you have a logo or can I get a, can I get a, can I get the logo or, and it's, it's simple things and it, it takes no time to give somebody the right, the logo, but it goes beyond just a logo. Now those are up there and those are available, available for people. Now we have a, a vessel, a platform to push out new content that is pushing our brand, really helping build our brand. Because what we wanted to do is we didn't want the brand to just be like, okay, here it is. We launched it. Have fun. It's like connective it's, tissue for the organization. It's connective tissue. And because the, the, a dam is, it's a living, breathing thing. It's never done. It's re- I've heard it described as, yeah, I've heard it described as restless. It's always oh, looking, sure. looking to change. Our businesses change, our, our users change, their needs, their wants, all that changes um, what our initiatives are. This is just a piece of that living, breathing thing that helps move us forward. Yeah. Now, um, on the journey, so we're up, we move through some struggles. There's always this inflection point or this tipping point of, okay, we know that we found success. Light bulbs are going off in the organization. We're sort of on the other side of an uphill battle. When did you know whether they be early indicators and or like true proof points uh, quantitatively, qualitatively also, because I think there's a lot of qualitative proof points in this. When did you know the, the mission was starting to see success? Well, Obviously, there's report dashboards of, you know, users logging in, um, of what we're uploading content and, and what people are downloading. But I think just more anecdotally, the success that I see is in the language. When I'm invited into a meeting or I go to a, a session of, of a group that I'm not in day to day work with and I hear them referencing it or their solutions being brought up. Oh yeah, we should, you know, incorporate that into the dam. Or I wonder if the dam can help us with this initiative. Then I know, okay, it's starting to spread a little bit. Yeah. You know, and I can't tell you in that first little bit of time after the brand was launched, of course, as a designer, you're always going to get the requests for, things. But what we did is we banded together and we're like, we're saying, okay, well, rather than give them the logo, Hey, here's the dam. And then they teach that to people. And then that kind of trickles down. And if you, if you spend your time kind of really promoting it in the beginning and then sustaining that promotion, it will, it grows. And that's where I'm saying like the language and just the reference to it and how people want to use it for other things. Or I wonder if the dam can do that. I wonder if we could do this or is it Mm -hmm. possible? And I get questions all the time now, not, Hey, can you get me a logo? It's, Hey, can the dam do this? Can, can we do that? Can we build that? What, what would that take? And that to me is really exciting. That is very cool. I mean, it's, it's reimagining the possibilities uh, now that it's embedded. Um, and so you're, you, that is an absolute cheat code right there in understanding that, uh, you're, you're achieving success. The language has changed the, yeah. the, um, the dynamic of the questions, uh, how folks reframe problems around what they're trying to achieve. Damn being part of, uh, the new, uh, uh language they use now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah the, the and, new- and, 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 and another thing, Ed, is like if we're looking at su- success metrics from what we did prior to our brand launch to after the brand launch. So we had in in from September to that January February time frame of 2020 to 21, we had about 
550 assets that we were able to rebrand so that it was ready on day one. This is 550. <laughs> 500, 550. So day one here, we have assets on the dam. These are ready to go. These are going to be the, you know, the heavy hitters, logos, mm -hmm. PowerPoint decks, you know, things like that. Yep. In the time post launch, so from February to May of 21, we produced 3,158 newly branded creative deliverables. It was a 484% increase in output. In 90, from our yeah, 90 days. Yeah. Yeah, that's a f almost five times. <laughs> if we that's didn't have the dam, can you imagine how many of those email requests I'd get? <laughs> It, the amount it's, of it's, unused, yeah, yeah. unused um, content. Content goes, what people is it, 8% of content? People that know it was there. Yeah. 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 People that wouldn't know it was there. And now this is the platform, you know, that you subscribe to and you, you go to for that single source of truth so that you can have those tools, those newly branded tools to promote this, you know, forward thinking, bright, energetic brand that we spent so much time and energy creating well we don't want it to die we want it to live and breathe get it out there this is the vessel to help that brand really success I, lead to I success love yeah. yeah i mean that's a very sort of well the well picture painted new beginning of uh of where you are now what's what's in the future right so obviously you've got this like new vehicle to drive change to uh drive um drive organizational mindset, you're reducing the amount of waste, you're accelerating uh, in, into market exponentially. Uh, what's like, if you could go into your, I don't even want to call it a crystal ball, right? Cause you've got this, this new organizational vision and foresight. What's the future path for Amerisaurus Bergen with the new dam in place, rebrand, you know, sort of giving, <clears throat> giving tailwinds. Yeah. You know, in a lot of video games, you play and you know that that at the end of the level, there's a big boss you have to fight. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> but in, in there you have all these little battles and you have to manage your resources, manage your health. You have to collect assets, you know, build your skills so that you can fight that future battle. That's what we're doing now is we're honing our skills we're collecting our assets, we're collecting our resources so that we can take on that next challenge, whatever it may be. And in such a large uh, corporate world, in the world that we live in, especially because of the pandemic and being so remote, we're, we're connected in different ways. Planning for that, planning for such global connectivity and having the resources and tools ready at the ready to do that is super important. That's paramount. Yeah. So it's like you're, we you're, are, yeah, we're actively, we're actively looking at, you know, okay, what new features are coming down the pipe for the dam? You know, I was actively watching the, the roadmap this morning, looking like, yeah, Hey, Kevin. is there something that I don't know about? <laughs> because I, I'm always looking at that thinking, how can I use this? And when would be the right time to implement it? in our system because it might not be the right thing for everyone you know um so it's about understanding what's coming on the pipe what is available now that we kind of want to throttle and and keep simple because i'm a i'm very big on the idea of keeping things simple and user friendly if mm -hmm. it gets too complicated and and muddied up people aren't going to use it or it's going to get too confusing and then it's going to be one of those things that you just don't use anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't yeah. want that to happen. So yeah, it's, it's about, it's about a steady, slow growth. You look at what the needs are now, what the needs are that you think are going to be in the future and you plan for it, but you also have, you know, plans B, C and D. Yeah. So you've created this, you've future proofed in, in many ways. You're, you've become, you've got the agile mindset, you future proof, you've got the technology. Yeah. And then back to our roadmap around composable and what Kevin was going through. I mean, that's, you know, this, in, this technology is continuously being innovated for that uh, future proof state. Uh, so that's, 
so let's go one more thing. We've got a ton of questions that came in. Honestly, first cheat codes where we've ever had live Q and A. So I'm excited to tackle this with you. But um, where you stand now, you know, having looked back, um, what would you? What's what are two or three things you would you would do differently? And if you had to do this again, what would those? What would they be? You well, know? the the number one thing is don't do it during a rebrand. Yep. Two is I think to have I, w- I would want more help. I think that there needs to be more proper help. Invest- yeah. Uh, yeah, proper 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 investment, but understanding that it doesn't have to be necessarily somebody that is experienced in damn administration or customer experience. It, it it's about just having more hands at deck that are innately good at problem solving really um so those are those are the biggest things for me honestly you know the help that we've gotten from a primo concierge during the initial setup understanding that one of the biggest challenges at least for me was understanding the language understanding how the primo system worked once i started to wrap my head around that and understand the intricacies of that back end, then it helped me translate that to people in a more digestible way. Yeah, that's awesome. Knowledge, understanding, language, terminology. All right, let's, uh, ready for some Q and a sure. Let's, let's tackle it. Yeah. Awesome folks for, uh, for dropping questions here. Uh, no particular order, uh, honestly, last in first, first out here. Uh, Margie, great question here. Um, Do you see a Primo for finalization of assets or do you use a Primo for the development of projects? What's the, in the world of, I'll call it uh, content life cycle, what's the, Mm -hmm. what are the stages of of content that a Primo serves AB for? Excellent question. And this is something that we're actively investigating. So right now we currently use the dam for signed, sealed, delivered final assets. You know, we have a specific brand with specific requirements and, and, and guidelines that surround it. And if there's an image that isn't properly to spec, it doesn't go up on the dam. You know, it has to go through our internal review process. And that's the same with, any type of final asset in this world that we live in, where our team is like almost entirely remote. We, we, we work in different areas of the country, different areas of the world. Having a, a dam as a tool that we can use for things that aren't approved is something that we're looking at and trying to figure out what is the best way to do that? How do we tackle that? in an efficient way. And there's some experimentation going on when we initially set up the dam. That was one of my ideas is I want to bake in an area of this. that's just for creatives. Nobody else can see it. We can have working files and try it. We haven't gone through any sort of testing in that segment yet, but it was one of my ideas that I had to initially set up. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens over the next um, six, 12 months in that regard, I'm hoping that we can kind of find some sort of a working solution where we do have those kinds of, of files and assets available, at least for a limited security group like creatives. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, more, more change working more upstream to mm-hmm. in, into the ideation, the creative phases, of course, where you, you've got um, a lot of your career path has, uh, has moved through. Uh, so yeah, great question, Margie. Um, all right. Another one here, uh, Greg asks a question and this is back to culture. Uh, he wants to know, um, is there an organizational structure, uh, like fully defined? What, what does the organizational structure look like? Uh, he's having trouble, uh, getting the company to more thoroughly embrace digital asset management culture. Uh, that's pretty cool. The culture of dam. You know, that it is there a culture of damn? What is it? What, and is there an org? 
design that's specifically crafted? There, so this, this might surprise you, and I don't want to scare anybody off, but the answer <laughs> is no. You would think for a company as large as we are that we would have it all figured out. It's okay. We don't have to have it figured out because we, we work together. We really, really have good working relationships, and it's something that I embrace as you know, co-creator of and, and administrator of the dam. But what's really nice is I think we have the right people around us to support us. And is there going to be some formal stru structure in the future? I would probably say yes. You know, like it's only a matter of time. We've only had our dam since, you know, officially launched in February of 21. So How many there were a, yeah. a little over a year. How many other folks in your org have dam in their titles like you do? Nobody. <laughs> well, that's not true. No, that's yeah. not true. In their title, um, n n nobody, but it is, there's two other administrators, like I had mentioned, um, um, JR and, and Natalie, my other administrators, and they're on the more, you know, the marketing technology stack. I, I come from it and I approach it more from a, you know, user experience design. What features do we want? What do we need? Because I am in the creative department. I am working with the marketers every day, all day long. So I know what the needs are better. And I know how to communicate that in a more efficient manner. So that's where my sort of expertise lies. Mm -hmm. When it comes to all the, you know, the technical jargon and, and, and you know, all, all, all of that sort of coding and building stuff, that is not my forte. <laughs> and yeah. that's, where, that's where I have other people to help and really pick up the slack that I'm just not good at. But yeah. will there be some future formal kind of structure? I, I would probably say yes. And in, in I, I, to anybody out there that's scared, like, oh, I just don't have the resources. Or I just don't have, I can't hire a damn librarian and an administrator. And it's okay. You have people around you that have the skills and, you know, the aptitude to like contribute in a meaningful way without having that sort of experience. I'm a perfect yeah. example of that. Yeah. I love that. And we honestly, we had a keynote, uh, uh, today, she talked about reskilling, upskilling, and I think that's the opportunity for folks in in the damn space, which is to take what you have, evolve to where the business needs it, learn some new skills along the way, uh, and then mm -hmm. also getting back to you know limited number of folks with damn in their titles. Dam is a very diverse titled space within organizations, and um, I think it'll always remain. All right, let's see here. Uh, got another question here. Um, oh, wow. They still keep coming in. Let's go to uh, Alicia. I didn't even read the full question. It's so long, but she starts off with an apology. Apologies that this is already covered, but does your team also use a Prima workflow? There's nuances and intricacies of how I think we did answer that uh, two systems. Um, wait, do you are you using any of the Prima workflow today? No, right now. No, we're reviews, not. Any reviews and <laughs> approval cycles? Nope. Not okay. yet. We're we're not using that at this cool. time. Yeah. That, yeah. This time. Um, excellent. Uh, another similar question here. Uh, here's a good one. Love this term democratized. Uh, has your dam been democratized across the entire enterprise? If so, do you have any statistics on how often uh, they utilize dam as a service to retrieve their assets? Um, is it uh, how o like the openness of, of the dam for folks? Uh, and sort of uh, giving them uh, spaces to, we'll call it set up shop and or uh, create, um, you know, places, collections, et cetera. It, I think there, there's heavy users. There's always going to be your power users and, and different groups of our organization that use it more. It's available to everyone. We have different security groups for different things, obviously. But one of the things that 
is on my roadmap and my goals is to help promote the dam more because despite what we've done, there are still people that don't know what it is or don't know what it's capable of or don't know that it's a tool that they have easy access to. Once you show them, then it's like I said before, it's like wildfire. It spreads and they tell, oh, did you know that we can get this? And then it becomes such a more powerful tool. We do not have any statistics about how many assets are being used outside of the dam versus on the dam because we are still in this growing phase. We're still in the, we're still learning. Yeah. We're taking our baby steps. And what we're trying to do is figure out, okay, what is it that people are craving and then implement that into our damn roadmap and build that out. Because like I said before, we had initial thoughts of this is what people will want, you know, and you put it up there and then nobody uses it. It's not or, what you they know, want. Nobody done, and it's not what they want. Or <laughs> you, we keep getting requests for this or, or, you know, back to the working files. That's a thing that keeps popping up. And it's like, okay, well, if we keep having this sort of discussion about, well, we, we should have a solution for that, then maybe we should be shifting our focus a little bit, be a little more agile in our uh, approach and figure out really, I say it again, is the juice worth the squeeze? If we do this and then we, we put an investment into switching some of our, 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 our platform around for a specific user group, is it going to provide a good result for the system as a whole, or is it just going to be for them? Because what we do not want to do is just create more silos. Yeah. That's all, you know, we're going to have to title this podcast is the juice worth the squeeze. We're always, you know, <laughs> doing that in post production, but I think you just nailed it right here. Uh, I, we do have a lot more questions, but we're going to have to land the plane. Derek, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, appreciate you sharing your story, uh, being uh, vulnerable here to talk about what worked, what didn't work um, and uh, dropping the cheat codes. I mean, if, yeah. uh, if I was going to do something similar, I would, write those down, write, put them up on a wall and create uh, guiding principles for dam, uh, yeah. activation. I'll, I'll put my own, my own game genie book together. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So we will post this, uh, uh, it's live, but it will get posted. Where, where can folks get in touch with you? What's, is there a good place? Is it LinkedIn? If they wanted to reach out and uh, continue a yeah. conversation. Yep. My, my LinkedIn information is, uh, it should be posted up there with everything else. Perfect. Derek, thank you so much. Thanks for coming on Marketing Cheat Codes here at Aprimo Sync. Anytime, Ed. Appreciate it. Take care. <laughs>